Hello, welcome to Pontilim Church Online. Thank you, thank you so much for tuning in today. What a privilege and an honor to be able to share the word with you this Sunday morning. But whether you decide to uh, click on our, our YouTube channel to listen to the word at midnight, what time in the week, we just say welcome, welcome. There is a congregation, we say welcome to our congregation, though we have been spending a wonderful time in worship for which we are so grateful because the Spirit of God is moving already, is doing things uh, in our life and is already sending out angels working on our behalf and on your behalf. You know, we've been interceding even for those who are watching, Lord God, remember them in their needs. So uh, welcome one more time. We're going to go into the Word. Allow me to bless the time of the Word. Father, thank you for the grace and privilege you give us to open the scripture and listen to you speak to us holy spirit as always we always looking to you we always leaning on you believing that you will breathe on the words that i prepared without you the word is bland and will not make sense but with your simple touch your simple breathing all of a sudden a simple word can be transformed and indeed it will be transformed speak to us we pray inspire us for this word we ask in the name of jesus amen and amen we've been um, um going from the beginning of january we've been going through a series called Grace Overflow. And so today we want to take a spin-off message of that grace. We took a little break. The beginning of the year, at the beginning of the year, we had a word um, that it was going to be a year of grace where we were going to need different type of grace. And so we went through, I think about two months or so where we were just patience opening up the scriptures and discovering that while well, there's more than just one type of grace there was a grace uh, for strength there was a grace for advancement there was a grace for there was all sort of grace and in fact most of the those um, messages i started by asking what grace do you need today because we found that by looking at this the key scripture uh, which i'm gonna ask you to turn to in a minute is um first Peter of chapter 5 10 to 11 we found by the grace of god that as you explore the scripture it's inexhaustive there's so many type of graces that we need and so because we had that word given to us in january that january is going to be the month of grace we went through week by week just going finding out every different week we needed a different type of grace and then the next month, oh, February, we needed grace again. We went through different times. It was funny. And when I look back from now to January, I realized that the Lord was kind of pumping personally me up, ready to kind of embrace before the end of the year that you think you need grace, you will need more. You are never out of, of needing uh, the grace of God. And now, as you begin to mature, you realize that you don't just say, God, give me grace. What grace? Which kind of grace do you need? So we went through that. And I want to encourage those who are online, if you click on the playlist on our YouTube, Ponte Healing Church, you go on the playlist, you will see one particular playlist saying uh, Grace Overflow. There's several messages there that you will find different type of grace. I want to encourage you to go there because today we're not focusing on grace uh, as a grace one word, but we want to take a spin off every time in the year where we feel like until we reach December 30, uh, 30th, is it 30th or 31st, I think, we're still going to believe God wants to show us something new about grace. There's, there's a new layer that's peeling off in our life. Then we will embrace it and come as he inspires us. Turn with me to 1 Peter 5. I'm going to read in the Amplified Bible version, but read it in any version you want. But I'd like to read it there and then I will introduce what exactly uh, that spin-off we, we want to talk about today. It says in the Amplified version of 1 Peter 5, 10 to 11, And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace who imparts all blessings 
and favor who has called you to his own eternal glory in Jesus Christ will himself complete and make you what you ought to be, establish and ground you securely and strengthen and settle you. Verse 11, to him be dominion, power, authority, rule forever and ever. Amen. And it says, so be it. So we went through a time where we discovered so many types of grace right there. And today, I just want to take you to a place where I was meditating in the week and I thought, wow, I think I need that kind of um, grace in my life, especially as, at this time. And if I'm not careful, I will grow older and forgetting that it's all to me and it's just left somewhere there, never claimed. In the Old Testament, particularly in Deuteronomy, you will find there where there's a law of Moses. They talk about when uh, a thief is caught, that thief will have to restore seven times whatever they, they stole. And in fact, when you read Proverbs 6, Proverbs 6 also talks about it, but it makes it a bit more plain. And that's when the question started. And sometimes my hunger to know more of God start with a question. In Proverbs 6, 30 to 31, this time I read in the New International Version, it says, people do not despise a thief if he steals to satisfy his hunger when he is starving. Yet if he is caught, he must pay sevenfold Void cost him all the wealth of his house. And I think, hang on a minute, this is very unfair. If you catch that thief, at least they can return the thing, that one thing. No, it says sevenfold. It quickly brought my memory to that law of Moses of the, the thief has to be stored seven times. What am I talking about? I'm talking about the mystery of divine restoration it's a mystery because when you think about it if you want to be logic you will say if i you stole a phone then it's only fair for you to return whether it's a brand new phone or say but you return a phone not return seven of them doesn't make sense there's a mystery right there and so when we go into the scripture you will think for yourself and realize that it's not just as simple as one item return. We want to look at the mystery of divine restoration. It's when something has been stolen, but God in this system of justice has a way of paying you back that you have more than what was meant to be somehow. But when it gets complicated, and I do not want to go there because I'm just today, admitting that I'm just scratching the surface because the more I was looking into the scripture, I was thinking, oh, I'm starting to become overwhelmed. First of all, a mystery is something you, you don't understand. It's like, you take it, this is what it is. Take it as it is. There is a mystery there for a reason. And so you will find out that when it comes, for instance, we're not even gonna go there for the cross is a mystery. One person dies, the whole world is redeemed restored to their relationship with God is restored one person Jesus but there's mystery to it right there and you look at the story of Job we're not even going into his story he's the man who's went through tragedy after tragedy lost so much he lost his son lost his wealth and when you read the end of the book of job you will see that a divine restoration took place that whatever the thief stole in his life he went through pain he had restoration but if you come to it as in well i had to i need to examine job and this is the kind of restoration i want then you will be completely off because the restoration that you need in your life and the one i need it's not the same as Job's, it's not the same as Brother James, it's not the same as Brother David, it's not the same as Sister Janet, it's not the same as um, Karen, it's not the same as everybody. So you will quickly realize that if you are owed anything in your life, you want a divine restoration that is applicable to you. 
and how you come to the scripture to learn the system, to learn how God operate. And based on that, you come as well to find where do I begin to find this thing that it begins to work for me as well. Not exactly as you read it that, okay, that's exactly what's going to happen. Job had, okay, she had now, she lost, he lost the sons. He was given beautiful women, beautiful girls, daughters. Now it doesn't add up like that. So what is it in my life that I need divine restoration that day? I am owed something. I want to find that out. And so if you allow me in a very short time, I'm going to condense as much as I can from my meditation, the time of meditation, I will say, Lord, I will grow even older. And if I'm not careful, this thing of mystery, because I don't understand it, it will be just there, like something is owed to me and uh, it's okay. I might even be just content with, was it a phone that was stolen? Just give me that one. No. The mystery of the kingdom said sevenfold. What does that mean? I want to understand that. And that's a type of grace that you will find out quickly. You need the type of grace to receive divine restoration in your life for it to make sense. Let's turn to Joel 2. Joel 2 will read from. 23 to 27, I'm reading from the New International Version. Let's just have a look at it. In fact, as you're turning to it, do you remember, um, it's so interesting. I really want to encourage you to do even your own study. Go at it yourself saying, okay, you know what's going on in your own life. What is all to you? You will find several times, it's endless in the scripture. There's a girl in Matthew 9, if you want to um, look at another type of restoration, she was literally dead. A little girl, Matthew chapter 9, 18 to 19. Her, for her family, Divine restoration was her com coming from the dead to life. But maybe you lost a loved one. Surely you're not going to see that loved one come to life. You can see now what I mean by you can't take that. Oh yeah, I want that in my life. But God, what I found that has a way of restoring the pain you had. If you lost someone and you can't have that restoration by having the replacement of your husband who died or your your child or but god has a way where the mystery begin to kick in is he restore those years that you went through pain he restore he gives you a massive comfort for the time that the enemy has devoured in your life if you just go to him knowing that what you're praying for what kind of divine restoration you're asking for not the unreasonable that you did this for job so that means that no no you go knowing your situation but looking at the principle and going to the father with his principle which is the word so joel chapter 2 in 20 uh, verse 23 i read it says we go from 23 27 said be glad people of zion rejoice in the lord your god for he has given you the autumn rains because he is faithful he sends you abundant showers both autumn and spring rains as before. The threshing floor will be filled with grain. The vat will overflow with new wine and oil. Verse 25, I will repay you for the years the locusts have eaten, the great locusts and the young locusts, the other locusts and the locust swarm. My great army that I sent among you, you will have plenty to eat until you are full, and you will praise the name of the Lord your God who has worked wonders for you. Never again will my people be shamed. Verse 27, then you will know that I am in Israel, that I am the Lord your God, and that there is no other. Never again will my people be shamed. Did you see that the mystery of restoration is talked about? He talked about a locust. He mentioned the locust again. He mentioned and the other locust. Every other type of damages that has been. He said, I will repay for those years. So the mystery there, the system you see, is a repayment for what has happened. The time that you have missed. The time that you have suffered. Let's look at this mystery. First of all, the word restoration. I went to the dictionary just to see what does it mean, restoration, 
for me to understand because we're talking about the mystery of divine restoration. The word restoration in the dictionary, particularly the Britann Britannica dictionary, I like that three type of restoration were mentioned and I want to um, show you how you can just look at the definition and think of your own life and see if in a way you can begin to think, yes, I think I'm all this and I'm all that. And so you know how to formulate your prayer when you come to the Father asking for divine restoration. It's not vague. Lord, I need restoration. Restoration in what way? Just like I say, I need grace. What kind of grace? Is it the grace for strength because you need strength that day? Is it the grace for resilience because you need to press through despite opposition? Is it the grace for, you know what I mean? There's different time. If you are, the closer you come to the Father with precision, the more you know exactly what you're asking for. And he says, ask and you will receive. And he's faithful. We just read it. He's faithful. The one who will pay is faithful. So the restoration word, according to Britannica Dictionary, the first uh, definition it says is the act or process of returning something to its original condition by repairing it, cleaning it. Think about it just for a minute. Returning something to if, to its original condition by repairing it, cleaning it. Is something that has been damaged in your family or in your life? There's something that needs to be repaired. Then that divine restoration for you. You really want something, God to pay you for the time that something has been damaged in your life. Whatever it is, damage of reputation, damage of finance, damage, something. He says it's the process of returning something to its original condition. You know what it makes me think? It makes me think of a case of healing. When someone has been sick in a way where it's affected his work life, and by God giving healing, it restores that person's health. It's a way where he returns, he repairs returning his organ back to the original. It makes sense. So you're thinking maybe there's been sickness that has taken years of joy. Those time that you spend, or my mom spent in bed being sick. When I'm thinking of praying for divine restoration over her life, I think of the years that the enemy has stolen for her to be on her feet enjoying her life. And so maybe I want to encourage you, begin to think in, a, in a, that specific way, what, what needs to be returned to its original condition in your life. And the second definition, it says, restoration is the act, it can also be the act of bringing back something that existed before. So the enemy has a way of making things disappear. Some people just look, hey, what, what, what is the, the, I've been paid, this and that, but the money disappeared. The enemy has a way of making things disappear in your life. Is that your case? Then while you come asking for the grace for divine restoration in your life, you might be thinking of, he has the ability to bring back something that existed before, but has stopped existing in my life. You know, that makes me think of when it comes to, in fact, it gives an example of, um, as an example, it says the restoration of law and order by police. In the scripture, the, when you look at the justice of God, it's almost like in our day to day, if you have a problem, you have a problem with your neighbor has done you wrong, you go to court. Law and order will make that person right. They will do what? It's like justice. Or you call the police and say, the police said, no, this accident, I'm sorry, sir, it was your fault. You're going to pay for the damage. They charge that person for the damage. Law and order. What is disorderly in your life like you look the enemy has really brought a mess in my life i need law and order but divine order in my life and that's how you go you you can see that i need that order like the judge would say order 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 silence we're going to go to the God, the Father, approaching him that he has the ability of restoring. And this is when I think of God's justice system. In fact, his word says in Psalm 89, 14, 
righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. So when we come into you, God, with this looking to you who is able to restore where the damage, the disorder has taken place in our life. We look at the one who is standing to judge, resting on justice as a foundation. It means you are guaranteed, my friend, when you know it's owed to you that God, his, his throne of judgment is resting on justice. He wants justice for you. Did you know that? He wants justice for you. So it's, Lord, there's been disorder in my life. There's been a mess. I need you to come, just like it says there, law and order. But you are beyond the police. Because you will find some country, I won't name even some country, where the police is corrupted. What do you do then? They still have done you wrong, despite what seemed to have been law and order in that country. They have overlooked at what is right. The justice of God, of God is able to restore the damage brought to your life, to restore those years eaten by the locusts and the other locusts. I believe that means different types of attacks in your life. Because he mentioned one locust, isn't that enough? And another locust, and the other locust, what are they? They represent, everything in the scripture represents something. And all the type is covered by the God, the, by the justice system of our God. And then the final, it says the returning, um, re, the, the act, restoration also means the act of returning something that was stolen or taken. This is the one that's easy when we've explained. Someone steals a phone, you get caught. They, they very will go quickly to the reasonable statement, which is, okay, I'll pay a new one. I'll, here's another one. But with God, you say, God. Sevenfold, there's a mystery. I pray for that mystery over my life. Well, I have more than what I have lost. Did you lose your dignity in the process? Did you lose whatever it was? Time. When I had time, had the pain. When I was mourning, whatever it was, there's more than one locus. That locus and the other locus and the other locus, it says. At least in the New International Version as I read it. So, Father, I'm coming to you. What has been taken? But I don't want just that thing to be restored. I ask for your restoration. Because God's restoration, you lost one car, don't go and say, no, can I have my car back? I'm asking for the mystery of divine restoration, where it's sevenfold. I don't understand. It doesn't make sense. But in your justice system, it does. And you are the one sitting on righteousness and justice as your foundation of your throne. So, Lord, this is what I ask for. Divine restoration, that mystery to be applicable in my life, to be applicable over our church. We pray for divine restoration. How many years have been wasted where people, the original people who started this church, they cried, their tears fell on the ground. It was blood, sweat and tears for them, for this building to be established. Generation have passed by. How many years have gone? So whatever has happened in the past, whatever has happened, can we pray as a church, Lord, restore. Not the way we think restoring means it used to be 100 members, so you give us one. No, we ask for sevenfold, the mystery. We ask for that divine mystery where we don't understand, we can't explain, but God's system makes sense. That's what we ask for in our life. But you have to go to the Father knowing what you're asking for. You have to go with that precision because now you understand there's more than one restoration. And one applies to the other, the other doesn't apply. What was stolen is re returned back. Oh, I think of the divine restoration that goes beyond the norm. In fact, that sevenfold. Did you quote and stand on the word of God? Like Proverbs 6.31 says, Father, you stand, your word says, that a, a, a fearful scourge Neither will return seven for Lord, this is why we also come. I want to take you to a scripture in um, the book of Ruth. The book of Ruth, in fact, 
It's a, it's a also a divine restoration, which is just a mystery there. Of course, we have covered it before where we talked about redemption, kingsman, redeemer in the book of Ruth. It's just stunning where there's a picture, a hidden picture of Christ Jesus on there, redeeming us. But we're not even going there. This is where it's so beautiful when it comes to the word of God. When you're willing, you approach the scripture, you will see a different layer every time you come and say, show me something, he will show you. In the book of Ruth, there's only four chapters, interesting story. I'm going to really sum up quickly in chapter one. A man named Elimelech took his wife Naomi, they go from the leave. Bethlehem, they go to Moab because there was a famine and then tragedy happened one after the other. Elimelech dies, his two sons dies. I mean, it's just sad, 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 saddest. It's like bad, worse, 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 terrible, misery. Whatever word you can think of, it's just terrible, terrible happened. Chapter two, um, when Ruth is one of his daughter-in-laws, the sons have died. She clings on to Naomi. She comes back to Bethlehem with Naomi. And then in chapter 2, Ruth meets Boaz. And then when she meets Boaz, it just happened. You know, there in the scripture, it says she just happened to have walked into a field to pick up some corn. But this is when you see where is that mystery of divine restoration. It's not just coincidence. There's no coincidence in the things of God. It was the grace of God over her life. The grace followed her when she went to work and she did not stay still. Grace followed her and divine restoration and grace met. And she met Boaz and life was changing. Chapter 3, they talk about Ruth and Boaz at the threshing floor. So Boaz happens to be that king's man redeemer in those days. That is basically the legitimate person in the family who was able to uh, uh, marry her back in a way to keep the lineage of the dead uh, husband. And so it's so beautiful when he marries her. And then we want to come to chapter 4 and read a little bit because Boaz, who's a hidden representation of Jesus, he keeps his promise. He said, watch this space. I'm going to redeem you. And in chapter 4, he actually goes ahead and redeems uh, the, young, the, the girl, the lady, uh, Ruth. So basically, when he redeems her, it's a restoration that takes place. First, she was a widow. All of a sudden, she's not a widow. She's married. But you can't say, okay, what about the time? This is when you look, you say, okay, she lost her husband. She got the husband. But she had more than the husband. The time that she was hurt, God gave her a child. God gave her abundance because this man also had wealth. He turns out to be a very wealthy man. This is when you see the sevenfold divine restoration kicking in, where it's more than just what you lost, the pain she went through. Let's read just a few verses now where we want to base our prayer as well and see if we can, like I say, I'm scratching the surface. I've got a short time just trying to combine things, but I want to um, encourage every one of us to say, if you owed anything, in fact, think about it. Maybe you were not even think about it. Your life is wonderful. Somehow, somehow, you were owed something. If you just pay attention in your family, is it through healing, for whatever, you will find out that you need that divine restoration. If not for you, at least pray for your grandchildren to have it. But you were owed, my, my friend, you were owed something. So let's read Ruth chapter 4 from verse 13. Ruth chapter 4, I'm going to read this passage in the English Standard Version. Ruth chapter 4, it says, So Boaz took Ruth, and she became his wife. And he went into her, and the Lord gave her conception, and she bore a son. The woman said to Naomi, Blessed be the Lord, who has not left you this day without a redeemer. And may his name be renowned in Israel. Verse 15, He shall be to you a restorer of life and a nourisher of your old age. I want you to remember that he shall be to you a restorer of life and a nourisher of your old age. For your daughter-in-law loves you, who is more to you than seven sons, has given birth to him. Then Naomi took the child and laid him on her lap and became his nurse. 
and the women of the neighborhood gave him a name saying, a son has been born to Naomi. They named him Obed. He was the father of Jesse, the father of David. That's another story where it turns up even that Ruth was a Moabite. Not only God restored their life, giving her a husband, giving her more than what she had, giving her a child, giving her wealth, and even in her descendants, Jesus comes to that lineage. What restoration is that? Divine mystery right there because she wasn't even allowed technically to even be in the lineage of Jesus the Messiah. She was a Moabite. She was not even an Israelite. You see how powerful the divine mystery right there of restoration is. This is why let's not take it so simple. If you owe something, know what you owe. Go to the Father and expect to get more than what has been lost. The time that she lost when she was mourning her husband, everything's been covered. And now when it comes to Naomi, isn't it fantastic? You look at Naomi. Naomi, you would say, okay, this is why I say don't take job story thing when there was a restoration taking place there and you want to relate your life to make that restoration apply to you. Job lost his children. God, yes, restored to him and gave him a different type of compensation. So these are the things that I want to quickly um, note and then mention them to you to see, notice on this passage what type of restoration is. Because when a woman loses a husband, for instance, you're praying for restoration. You're not expecting the husband to come back from the ground that, you know, five years he was buried. He's not going to come back. But you are looking to a God who's got the power of changing that mystery time and paying you for the locusts that have eaten those years of pain. Those years of suffering, those years of mourning. He has a way of restoring it. In other words, he has a way of bringing a massive consolation price. It's still something some people say, uh, they will just go to, to you know, the cemetery. They will die without being returned, without receiving, claiming anything. So, so and so, it was painful season. My, my brother was murdered. I'm just giving an example. So they're never going to claim. What about the painful time? What about believing that God has a way of giving that massive consolation price? He sits on a throne which is based on justice. This is why you want more than just, this is what I lost. But I want your justice system. You know how to repay me. Maybe it's going to make sure that in your lineage, something amazing happened. But you claim it today. You go to him and say, divine restoration where the mystery, your mystery takes place sevenfold. That's what I ask for. So believing it, that if I don't see it, this God who we've just read, he is the restorer. This God will make it happen. He knows how he's going to do. Is he going to be through the children? Is he going to do? But he will catch up that time that sevenfold is beyond what you lost. Divine restoration. Don't you want that? I know I want that. The Lord God is the restorer. When you read Ruth 4, 13, Naomi's youth was renewed. Naomi is the one who was even the mother-in-law. She gone past that time where she lost her husband. Look at her life. Suppose she was the one in a corner. It has not been documented, but suppose she was the one praying for divine restoration. We finished reading the story. Her husband Elimelech did not come back to life. We finished reading the story. Children, two children, uh, Malon and the other one, did not come back to life. But we read that a youth was renewed. We read that the women, the neighbors are singing that Naomi, they're not singing about Ruth. They're singing that Naomi, through this one daughter-in-law, it's like, it's funny how it says, they said, it's like the Lord has given you seven sons. What does that have to mean? One daughter, seven sons. She had two daughters. Do you see where the link is going? The seven is that number that represents perfection in the spiritual realm. So in God's system, she had a restoration. 
All I'm just trying to get to my friend is that have you had your restoration, your divine restoration? Now you fighting with your uncle. This was my house. This was your just one. Okay, now until I get that one house. How about going to the one who's supreme? The God who is able to give you sevenfold. How about asking for more than just that house? Because that time that he calls you that uncle trying to take the house, causing you pain, causing you turmoil, causing you sleepless night. Can you rewind and sleep lovely? No, but God has a way of restoring those nights that you didn't sleep. Those nights that they cause you pain. He has a way of doing that package of restoration. This is what I'm on about, friend. Not the literal thing that you're missing out. He has a way of taking that restoration into the future. Into you, so if it's not touching you, your children, it's touching you even beyond. That's the kind of restoration I'd rather have than just the one thing that I, I, I lost. The restore. Naomi, it says she has been restored through a daughter-in-law who, who is like more than seven sons. And then it's a beautiful thing, the picture that is given to us that she put the baby with a, basically a grandchild. God renews her youth. She puts the baby who's a grandchild and she's able to nurse the baby. So it's not even Naomi, uh, Ruth, taking care of the baby like, well, feeding time. No, Naomi, who's the grandmother, suddenly milk comes in. She's feeding the baby. Divine restoration. Do you understand how does that work? Something happened, medically speaking, to a woman's body when you're having a baby that you don't need to work, you don't need to eat something particular, just milk is coming through. Milk is coming. You know what I'm talking about. But how do you explain someone who did not carry a baby for nine months suddenly having the ability to nurse a baby? Divine restoration goes beyond. That's God's justice system. And that's what I want to encourage every one of us as I've come to bring this message to God to say, let's begin to pray for sevenfold. Let's begin to pray that we need more than just, Lord, I need your grace to see my breakthrough. No, I need your grace, but I also need divine restoration, sevenfold, God justice system where I don't understand that kind. That's what I'm praying. That kind, that's what I'm praying for the church. That's what I say, Lord, those people who cried who are not even longer here. Can we see that restoration today for this church? Lord, those things that my parents maybe have prayed in the corner, that they've not seen divine restoration where I ask for more than just the time that was lost, the pain that was caused, your mystery, the divine mystery of a, a restoration that comes from you who are the judge who sits on the throne based on a foundation that is justice and righteousness. You will do me right, Lord. You will do me right because it is your word. I come and I stand on your word. I want to encourage us. And before the service finishes, we'll pray together. And I know the service, you are limited to time. You take this word, you continue to pray at home, and you do not stop. It's very important. The Lord's favor. So this is where I'm, I made sure I mentioned that this is a spin-off from grace because you need the Lord's favor. You see that when she walked into that field, it wasn't just any field. The steps of the good man or woman of God, the step of a child of God are ordered by the Lord. Lord, even as I leave this house, order my step. Because wherever I'm going, I'm waiting and expecting for divine restoration to come either way possible, whichever road it is, it's coming. But Lord, I'm, as I'm leaving even this place, Lord, be it through the work, neighbor, friend, just even, Lord, I'm expecting divine restoration. You're just believing it. There was that power of expectation. You look at Naomi in chapter 3. Oh, it's actually gorgeous that bit when you read it. She could have just pretended, you know, I'll be, you know, I've been married before, but it clearly says, Naomi advised Ruth and said, hey, Clean yourself up. Put a nice dress. Now go. Ten boys. Go, go. And, and she didn't even say the word. She went and manifested and removed the garment, the, the cover on his feet. She basically went boldly expecting doubt. This is what I'm, I'm asking. Redeem me. 
So if you put it bluntly, she asked him for marriage. But she went, she cleaned herself, she did her part. She was at work in the field. So this is when I want to ask you as well, like what are you doing while you're waiting with that expectation to see God's divine favor? Don't just stay like that. Yes, we're waiting, but you need to do your part. I always say what God will do, men will not, what men will do, God will not do. So it's not God who wash roof. It's not God who put a night dress on her. She made sure she was actually looking the part. She made sure she put on that dress. She's the one who uncovered. It wasn't an angel, the Holy Spirit. She's the one who went and laid at the feet. Read chapter 3. She laid at the feet and now uncovers his feet, which is significant when he walked out. Say, oh, she wants me to be redeemed. She, she wants me to redeem her. She actually went, so you're the one who's going to say, God, I'm examining my life. Something is owed to me. I'm coming. I'm asking for this restoration. So you do your part. Whatever you're supposed to do, you faithfully continue to do it, expecting the power of expectation. In Isaiah 61, we won't read it because time is gone. Isaiah 61, we look in, or you can see where it talks of the year of the Lord favor. It's another scripture. I want to encourage you when you're praying for divine restoration, you can bring that word. It's nice to pray with the word because you're not just saying blah, 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 sheep, have him anymore. You're actually bringing the word. God, you said this. You're standing in Psalm 89. It says your, your throne is on. You're actually bringing his own word. Your throne is based on righteousness and justice. Look at what has been done. I pray for justice. Or I'm asking also, by the way, the sevenfold one, that's the one I'm asking for. And he's talk about Isaiah 61, uh, the Lord's favor. I realized that as I was reading the scripture, like I said, it will require God's grace for divine restoration to meet you. In other words, God's favor. So I'm asking for that. You go with Isaiah 61. You read that. It says the year of the Lord's favor. Vengeance for our God. Comfort those who mourn. If you've been mourning, then you know what to do, Lord. For the years I've been praying, I've been hurt. For those years, I'm asking for the oil of joy instead of mourning. Lord, that restoration that goes beyond. In verse 7, it says, instead of your shame, you will receive a double portion. Father, pray for that double portion over our life, over our children, for all the area I need justice Lord I pray as your word says instead of disgrace you will rejoice in your inheritance and you will inherit a double portion in your land an everlasting joy will be yours verse 8 it says for I the Lord love justice Lord you love justice it's your thing you love justice I hate robbery and wrongdoing it says there so I come to you with your own word do me justice. Do my family justice. We pray for that in the name of Jesus. Yes, friend, don't be shy of crying out to the Lord. Crying out to the Lord. I pray for the mystery of divine restoration. I'm not going to be ashamed that I am old. Lord, I pray for divine restoration for this church. We're not going to pretend this church is old a restoration. Somebody prayed for it to stay open. We're going to ask God when you pray, friend, even at home, would you stand with Pontiel in church? Would you say, Lord, give them divine restoration for those people who started it? We just came. Can we be those generations that see the restoration following us? And it goes beyond us. Even after us, they're still seeing the restoration coming and taking place. I want you to take that word of God and just begin to pray for your own self. Are you old something? Begin to pray. Pray and ask, remember the God of justice. I'm closing now. Luke 18 is another one. Luke 18, you know, Jesus himself. I'm just going to quickly read. Luke 18 talks about the parable of the persistent widow. We normally talk of this passage as persistent prayer. Don't stop praying. But I want you to see the word justice in it. When you're praying for divine restoration, you're basically asking for a miracle. Because you look at every stories of restoration in the scripture, like I said, it's overwhelming. It's so many. Like I'm only scratching the surface, yes, but every single story, you can just stick with one. It's a miracle. 
You're basically asking for a miracle. And in that passage, in verse 6, Luke 18, Jesus says, this, you know, persistent widow was annoying, yes, but it's not about just pray, like I said, not just pray any general, yes, Lord, your grace, yes, Lord, your abundance, yes, Lord, your breakthrough, I mean, yes, Lord, that, I mean, what exactly are you owed? What are we praying for? That divine restoration. And he says, Jesus' word, these are his word. He says in verse 6 of Luke 18, And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And I will not, and will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night. Will he keep them, will he keep putting them off? Yeah, his verses, I tell you, we will see that they get justice and quickly. Lord, see that we get justice quickly. Let's begin to pray. Lord, see that we get justice in our life. Come on now. I'm just going to invite you at home. We are closing because we can't go with a long video. It will be too long to edit. But begin to pray, you know. We're going to go off the video. But I'm inviting you to like call on to the Lord. Come on. Father, we call on to you. It says in your word right there we read. that it says, you, I tell you, will he not, will he not get them justice? Would you get justice, Lord? We ask for divine restoration for your people here in this house. We ask for divine restoration for those who are praying online concerning the life. There are many people, if they tell you their story, oh, you could even cry because something bad has happened in the family. So much injustice. Oh, Lord, you are the God of justice. Today we come together standing and agreeing on your word that you are indeed the restorer. You are the restorer. So, Lord, as we look to you, we said we have been old. The people even watching, they are old something. Would you hear the prayer? Would you restore? We ask for divine restoration, not just any kind. We ask for that divine restoration as mentioned, Lord, sevenfold, sevenfold. We pray for that mystery where we don't understand, but you bring beyond our understanding. We ask this thing in the name of Jesus. Amen. Keep praying. We're going to go off. Yababa Shandari Lisa.